Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are in the world. Uh, welcome to our TELIT webinar, multi MZ eSIM, iSIM, how to choose the right SIM for your IoT deployment. I'm Amanda Flink, the head of global events here at TELIT, um, and I will be moderating our event today. Before we start, we would like to understand our audience's eSIM provider selection process. So please, if you could take just one second to fill out the poll question, which you'll see on your screen now. Now let's get to know the speakers. To explain this topic today, I'm pleased to be joined by two speakers. First, we have Marco Stracuzzi, the head of product marketing at Tellit. Hi, Marco. Hi, Amanda. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here today. And second, we have Noam Shani, Connectivity Product Marketing Director at Tellit. Hi, Noam. Hey, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Just before I hand it over to Marco to start the presentation, I do have a few quick reminders. I would like to encourage our audience to ask questions. You can simply submit a question by posting in the box to the right of the slides. Uh, we will have time to answer some of those at the end of the presentation here. Also, please be sure to check out the resources section in the upper right-hand corner of your screen for some additional information on today's topic. Uh, there you'll find the slides, a white paper, and a few other resources. Uh, finally, we will send out the replay link to all attendees at the conclusion of this webinar. Um, and with that, Marco, I will hand it over to you to start. Thank you. Good. Let's get started. So I want to start my presentation today dispelling a myth. So, so let's be honest here. IoT, it's, uh, it's not easy. Uh, it's not simple, it's rather a, a complex uh, labyrinth. And one of the top challenges of connecting uh, your IoT devices uh, is how to get good and at the same time affordable cellular connectivity in all the regions where you want to deploy your devices. All without going nuts about managing the relationship with multiple different network operators one per each country, and each one with their own commercial contract, billing system, SIM management platform, and customer support system, all of them different from each other. The good news is that IoT MVNOs, like Telit, precisely want to solve these challenges, thus making IoT easier for you. And my colleague Noam will, will further elaborate on that aspect in the second part of today's session. But allow me to briefly say it already now, because it's important. We at Telit handle on your behalf the complexity of interfacing with multiple partner MNOs behind the scenes and act in front of you as a single point of contact for everything. A single global connectivity contract, a single billing system, the same connectivity management portal across all regions and the same customer support. This is made possible also thanks to three main innovative SIM technologies that are the focus topic for today's webinar. And they are multi imsi eSIM, and iSIM. So first of all, let's agree on the definitions. Uh, let's recap what those terms, multi imc eSIM, and iSIM actually mean. The IMC is the unique identifier of a cellular subscriber in the network of an MNO. And having multiple IMCs inside the same SIM means that you can choose among multiple MNO subscriptions to use either the one that gives you the best rates, so the lowest rates in a target country, or the one that guarantees you the best coverage in a specific location. For example, this is particularly important for mission critical customers who always ask for high reliability of the connectivity and want to be protected against connectivity outages. So once those criteria, uh, either best price or best coverage are clear, the IMSI switch can be handled automatically by an applet inside the SIM or the IMSIS, which can be triggered remotely from the SIM management portal. Ultimately, multi imsi is a solution to create better roaming footprint, thanks to the availability of multiple IMSIS belonging to more roaming operators, so that you can choose the option with either the best price or the best coverage. 
The second type of new SIM technology, and also the second definition, is UICC, that is short for Embedded Universal Integrated Circuit Card. UICC is the capability, the feature of a SIM to be remotely provisioned over the air, including over the air MNO swap. And the remote SIM provisioning mechanism is specified by two GSMA master documents, one for the consumer and the other for the M2M use cases. The IUICC definition has nothing to do with the physical form factor of the SIM. In fact, an IUICC can be a traditional plugged in plastic SIM card a SIM chip to be soldered onto a PCB, or a software emulating the SIM functionality and running inside the system on chip. Now, uh, I'm sure you have heard another popular uh, term many times, uh, eSIM. eSIM is commonly used in the market as a synonym of EUICC. It has a slightly different uh, meaning actually, as it usually refers also to a specific form factor, that is the SIM chip to be soldered down onto a PCB, and has the remote SIM provisioning and MNO swap capabilities mentioned before. So we can say that eSIM usually refers to a SIM chip, a soldered down SIM, that can be remotely provisioned over the air. Uh, the key point here is that thanks to their remote SIM provisioning capability, eSIMs allow for the flexibility of changing the connectivity provider during the lifetime of a device without a costly visit to the device to do a physical SIM swap. In addition, the device owner with eSIM gains near instant management and control capability from a single and efficient platform. Now, a, a quick view on the market state of eSIM. As shown in these graphics uh, that is taken from a GSMA survey about the importance of eSIM for enterprises across different vertical sectors, eSIM first became popular in consumer electronics. In fact, today you can find many smartphones and smartwatches already supporting eSIM. The same goes for automotive with many connected cars using eSIM while they move around in different countries and continents. In addition, more and more IoT verticals are realizing the advantages of eSIM for use cases like uh, transportation, uh, such as fleet management or trailer telematics, healthcare, think about uh, personal medical devices that must work and connect to the network wherever they are turned on by, by the patients, Utilities and smart energy, um, like um, smart meters that can be installed and must be connected in different countries of the world, as well as others. Um, one more I want to mention is retail. Uh, think of uh, a mobile point of sales or, or a vending machine. Just another survey from a different research firm, um, Beecham Research this time, shows what are the main drivers to adopt eSIM for enterprises. Uh, first, eSIM remote diagnostic tools are valued a lot for fast troubleshooting. Then the ability to remotely activate eSIMs anytime and anywhere. The high expectation is that activating an eSIM in the field must be easy, fast, uh, just a matter of a click in a dashboard, wherever the device integrating that eSIM is located. Finally, security is key, and it is guaranteed by the fact that the eSIM relies on a secure hardware element and that it cannot be physically act because it is soldered onto a PCB, so you cannot simply unplug it and, and steal it. Also, the exchange of information over the air between the SIM and the network is secured as it must comply with the rules defined by the GSMA specification. Being said what um, a multi MC sim is and what an eSIM is, let's try to compare the two solutions. Uh, both eSIM and multi MC can support all SIM physical form factors, even if we also said that usually an eSIM is a solder down SIM. Then eSIM can host multiple MNO profiles, that is like saying that it can host multiple different physical SIM cards in a single uh, one. 
The main difference is that when you swap a menu profile, it's like look, you completely change the SIM card. So you move from one provider to another. While with multi MC, the fundamental relationship stays with the original provider, even when you change the MC. Technically speaking, multi MC are proprietary solutions that allow you to use a single mobile number and roam in the same core network, while eSIM is a GSMA standard that guarantees interoperability. So you replace the full profile in the SIM, you change also the core network, you use a different mobile number, you have a new native SIM solution in each local network. Again, it's like you completely replace the SIM card. The other big difference uh, I think it's important to mention is the maturity of the two solutions. eSIM is now well specified by GSMA, but it's still in its early days of market adoption, especially for IoT. While multi IMC solutions are available and widely deployed since few years, so they are field proven, and also the cost of multi IMC has gone down during the years. While eSIM, being at the beginning of its adoption curve, uh, will most likely see its costs going down in the next years as volumes scale up. Now, the only missing piece of the puzzle is the EUICC, also, sorry, IUICC, also known as iSIM. iSIM is a trusted and secure operating system emulating the SIM functionality, running in a trusted and secure area of a system on chip, usually the cellular modem chipset. So it's not running on a discrete hardware secure element like the eSIM, as the secure element in the case of the iSIM is inside the system on chip itself. There are already in the market some examples of iSIMs. One is Telit SIMWISE, which I will cover soon. Uh, and it's our brand name for uh, our proprietary iSIM technology. But you can also find other solutions from different providers. Important, the remote SIM provisioning capability of the iUICC or iSIM is exactly the same of the EUICC or eSIM. If we compare this uh, Mobile World Live survey about iSIM with the one we have commented before about eSIM, you can see that the percentage of industry players that are considering adopting iSIM is lower compared to, to eSIM, which makes sense as iSIM is even newer and less mature technology than eSIM. It's a far uh, what are the iSIM key benefits? Uh, low power consumption, uh, as the iSIM is not adding any hardware electronic component draining current on its own. Small size, as it is integrated inside an existing component, usually the cellular system on chip. And for the rest, it has the same operating system as physical SIM cards and the um, EUICC remote SIM provisioning capability is identical. Let's talk about iSIM standardization. Um, iSIM standard is not finalized yet, so it's behind compared to eSIM. But good progress is being made at the main standardization and industry bodies. GSMA is adding iSIM with agreed security requirements to the new IoT spec for remote SIM provisioning that was originally conceived only for EYCC. Etsy, it's also working on a similar standard for an, an integrated form factor called Integrated Smart Secure Platform, ISSP. And finally, TCA, Trusted Connectivity Alliance, is acting as a third party, playing the role to try to make those two initiatives converge with, uh, with each other. Now, to wrap it up on the iSIM topic, uh, Telit actually was a pioneer in the iSIM space, jumping ahead of the market with the introduction of Telit SIMWISE back in 2017. Uh, SIMWISE is our proprietary, as it is a pre-standard version of an iSIM. And again, it's a SIM functionality implemented through a piece of software that is running directly in a trusted area of 
of the cellular system on chip in the module. The implementation of the SIM operating system is proprietary, but the remote SIM provisioning feature is compliant with the GSMA specification. So the solution is designed to be interoperable with the industry standard. TELIT SIMWISE is available on TELIT LTM, narrowband IoT, LTE CAT1, and LTE CAT4 modules. Because let's not forget that TELIT is not only an IoT MVNO, but also a well-established module vendor in the market since more than 20 years. So the most powerful combination that we can offer is the combination of our cellular SIM technology into our wireless communication modules. The advantages, the benefits of SIMWISE are exactly those that we mentioned before for iSIM, but let's focus on a few more in this slide. Uh, SIMWISE eliminates the physical component of the SIM from the electronic bill of material, and thus it saves hardware cost. It also eliminates the SIM tray, it's not needed, again saving some cost, and also increasing robustness and durability. Uh, furthermore, it extremely streamlines the logistics if compared with the complex management of physical SIMs that require inventory, handling, installation, and activation. So to close this first part of the webinar, let's recap. There are more and more different new SIM technologies and form factors available today in the market. And TELIT has an offering, both as an IoT and VNO and as a module vendor, for each of the various SIM flavors that uh, I've been discussing in terms of technology and market trends so far. To further elaborate on what are the different TELIT SIM solutions, I'm now handing over to Noam. Thanks for now, and Noam, please, stage is yours. So, um, thanks, Marco. Um, what we will do for the next few slides is dig in a little bit more into our solution. Um, after agreeing on the complex world we, uh, we are in, as Marco showed us, and after seeing the technology that's available um, to solve this, we understood the efforts and solutions needed. Uh, for that exact point, Telit came with her global connectivity portfolio, uh, local connectivity via local MNOs, Telit Next, and Telit Next Plus. Putting aside the local connectivity for a minute, it's basically a resale mod. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, for Telit Next and Next Plus, we established a network uh, that is cloud-native mobile core network that enables new and enhanced turnkey connectivity abilities and also device manager services. Um, it has access to over 600-plus networks as 2G, 3G, 4G, CATM, and narrowband in more than 200 countries. Um, the Telit Next network provides connectivity solution to enterprises, IoT service providers, and other users. All that um, through our ecosystem. Uh, we are talking about seamless roaming coverage, services, and solutions that enable flexible and reliable connectivity. Those solutions are based on global uh, roaming agreements, IMSI sponsors, and lately localization throughout uh, EYCC capability. So by applying that, uh, we can truly offer our customers one simple point of action to all solutions needed worldwide, contracts, logistics, billing, and support. Um, now let's take a look at some bricks uh, that build the story of Telit connectivity proposal. We have one SIM with adapted profile with uh, several IMSI sponsors that are being updated constantly and by that upgrades to con uh, the connectivity proposals for our customers. customers. This has given us the ability to stay aligned with our customers' needs at all time. Uh, we support IoT, and broadband, broadband uh, relevant technology as LTE, CATM, narrowband IoT, and legacy technologies worldwide. This is a living and breathing ongoing work uh, that we do, always uh, upgrading and updating throughout our MNOs agreements. Um, we are using an hatch footprint of our roaming partners with vast regional and global plans 
to supply a cost effective and best coverage again support low power and broad uh, broadband technologies another important thing is using uh, our edge solution simwise as marco mentioned uh, the iuicc embedded connectivity software c model that sits right on the sweet spot uh, for utilizing a true life cycle device with large durability, low TCO, streamlined operation, and overall low footprint of, uh, on the module. Last and not least, the next plus EYCC solution that I will elaborate in my next slides. Um, what Telit Next enables is the visibility and control for our customer needs over their worldwide mobile IoT deployment. Uh, all that through an essential connectivity CMP that can operate, deliver, um, and deploy all IoT devices. Let's go through the three main pillars as we see it. Um, no doubt, uh, the global coverage via multi-carrier roaming agreements and multi imsi solution are essential for faster deployment. Uh, with access to over, as mentioned before, 600 uh, networks in 200 countries, and increased reliability for high availability services. A multi-network SIM solution for mission critical and ensuring quality of service by being a fully gear redundant global IP network. This is the basic for it all of us. Uh, the second pillar refers to uh, um, secured connectivity. Obviously, there is a clear need for fast and flexible implementation of enterprise grade access solution such as VPN, private APN. These are classic and very required solutions. Another thing um, is the ability to enforce security rules, automatic triggers and alerts against cyber threats. For example, I'm EI lock if your device is lost or stolen. And the last one is the connectivity management platform. We need to uh, make accessible, accessible monitoring and analytics that diverge from data usage uh, for gaining full control of our customers' devices, all that by defining triggers and automatic smart actions. Furthermore, a, a, a unique smart billing offer called Optimus uh, that's assigned each SIM to the most cost-effective data plan and eliminate data overages and bill shock. And of course, uh, 24-7, 365 days a year, global support for all technical, operational customers' needs. So here we see the architecture of our solution, the whole components needed. Uh, basically, tell it sits on the whole chain of value, as you see in a minute. Uh, first of all, vast flavors of modules all form factors of SIMs, as we saw in Marco's slides, MVNO core network with large roaming footprint and strong CMP and managing the device's uh, SIM lifecycle. If we go through a journey, let's say, of an IoT thing device, uh, we can see from the left to the right, a, a SIM is inside the model, is implemented into the device, for our example, an eSIM. It uh, connects to a local MNO through its access network, most of the time non-steering, best coverage available per technology. Then uh, with STP protocol, go through the core network components as HLR, SMSC, and if needed, voice gateway. Most of the cases are data usage and SMS. Um, operation billing support system are in place uh, to the last element where the customer can manage his things uh, in a CMP friendly interface in a secure manner. Another solution and the next level needed to enable a real one global SIM um, is the ability to switch between profile uh, over the air. Here we can dig uh, in deeply into the next plus our EUICC platform offering we have to the market. In uh, the left pillar, we can basically present a clear service optimization. That means we can avoid regulatory issues as roaming restrictions in some countries, as we know there are some, and I will elaborate more in my next slide. We definitely can have better price prices to offer local prices versus roaming, especially for MBB, high data usage. Can also cover more gaps 
uh, in countries like the US, uh, the coverage pains uh, are more common and support vast technologies available. In the second one, we can see the fully flexibility and resilience for the customer side. This will bring logistics advantage for sure. Also, uh, this puts a slogan used by all, one SIM for the whole life cycle of device deployment as an, av as an available, available one. Um, we have the full confidence bringing the ability to do provider switch to our customer grasps. Uh, we will be judged by our good service and keep us edgy to always do so. And the last one, we will bring our own connectivity uh, solution is another open access approach. Large customers can bring their own buying power and apply their agreements. Uh, the customers use our platform and inter infrastructure for that manner. Um, so which, uh, with Talit Next and Talit Next Plus, uh, we can offer a true global solution to its vast footprint IMSI sponsor, as we said, and by, buying, uh, by being a full MVNO. Still, there are some challenges needed to be addressed. Uh, one of the biggest one is the permanent roaming restrictions issue. Uh, just to be aligned with the uh, definition of what is permanent roaming restrictions, um, it's a set of rules that prevent permanent pr uh, presence of an IoT SIM in the network in some key markets, such as the US, Brazil, uh, Turkey, and uh, I think, yeah, partly, of, uh, partly in Australia. Nevertheless, uh, roaming restriction status is changing nowadays in some countries. This uh, affects automatically on our partners and customers, for example, device makers. Uh, they need to design two SIM tray slots uh, for sure different cost. It's more expensive, even dealing with multiple uh, supplier, supplier agreements. Therefore, another local solution is required. Then, uh, if a permanent presence is required in countries that for regulatory or commercial reasons not possible, we can apply localization to downloading or preloading a second profile. One is our main profile, tell it next, with a strong footprint to our multi inz solution and the local one, for an example, for the US market of one of the MNOs, depend on what technology is needed and coverage. The solution comes for our end, obviously, and for that, tell it launched, uh, tell it next. If we want to recap for a second, uh, we can see a more visual way our, to our path uh, of, to offer one single global SIM. Uh, we do standalone resale solution with the top MNOs. Adding to that, um, the, multiple, the multi imsi solution that provides flexibility, optimization, backup and redundancy with strong IMSI and enjoying their footprint. And finally, EYCC that gives us the ability to switch between different profiles and enjoy the ability um, to do localization. It brings us to have more than 600 MNOs on our network and basically no restrictions like we saw in the last slide. It's important to emphasize that this is, uh, this, it needs uh, consist, uh, um, uh, consistent uh, work with MNOs and other relevant providers to allow uh, to always be with uh, competitive uh, prices, providing best coverage available as possible, and support uh, a variety of existing technologies, like we said, 2G, 3G, 4G, etc. These are the three components that build Telit's offering today. So it's time to wrap it up. Uh, so global cellular ecosystem evolution may cause disruptions uh, to worldwide connectivity and IoT. We agreed on that. In the left, we can see uh, the main ob obstacles. We see regulations uh, or commercial decisions that block IoT devices with, with permanent roaming restrictions. Uh, visited networks trying to recover revenue, uh, revenue adding costs on IoT devices. Some are increasing inbound roaming rates uh, to recover lost revenues. Uh, more applications require backup and redundancy uh, uh, functionality for mission critical uses. Uh, and new technologies require new roaming commercial terms, testing, and implementation. 
To overcome all that, we need to offer Telit MVNO Multi-EMS the core network solution, the Telit Next, true global MNOs partnerships, including localization via EYCC on all technologies, Telit Next Plus, advanced SIM technologies, our embedded SIM solution, iSIM branded as uh, SIM-wise like Marco presented before, and last, professional secured own CMP and one edge device manager management for our customers. So uh, I'm pretty much done. Uh, back to you, Amanda. Great, thank you both. Um, before we get to our questions here, I am going to drop just one last poll for our audience. Um, if you'd like to have one of our connectivity experts contact you directly, um, please respond here on the poll and we will have someone reach out um, we do have time for a few questions now. Um, there's still time to ask a question, so please feel free to submit, and we will do our best to cover it in the time we've got left here. Um, we've had quite a few come in throughout the webinar, so I am just going to dive right in, guys. Um, first question, can an EUICC supplied by vendor number one work with the platform of a vendor number two? I, I can take the stab, uh, Rita, Amanda. Uh, so answer answer is yes. Um, inter vendor interoperability is guaranteed by uh, the GSMA specification. So so clearly both platforms uh, must comply with the GSMA uh, specification. Also, we we recommend uh, uh, some uh, preliminary integration testing and validation activities between the two platform. Uh, it may be that also some small adjustment uh, must be done before doing the actual uh, swap in, uh, in the field. Um, so so there's, uh, there's some work to be done. Clearly, it also has a cost uh, when we talk about the integration between the two platform. Uh, but it's definitely possible. And, uh, and let me say, interoperability is uh, precisely the common goal of the GSMA ecosystem. So, so UICC uh, is a standard solution, and and one really of the targets is really to ensure uh, that there's no uh, MNO provider lock-in, uh, but uh, customers uh, using UICC are are able have the flexibility to um, switch between uh, between providers. Great, thanks, Marco. Um, next question I have here is: If EUICC includes two profiles, will the customer need to pay for two SIMs or ICC IDs? I'll take that, Amanda. Um, it's a pretty straightforward one. Uh, for the physical SIM, no. Uh, only one physical SIM is required and will be charged once. So it's pretty simple. Great, thank you. Um, next question. Do Telet modules support all of um, the three SIM technologies that were presented during this webinar today? So multi-MZ, eSIM, and iSIM? Hey, good question. Let me let me take it, please. Uh, so, uh, almost all Telit modules can work with uh, uh, multi EMC sims, uh, e sims, and i sims. Uh, I mean, for example, um, a Telit module works fine with an e sim soldered next to the module uh, onto the host PCB, and this is very popular configuration we are seeing in the market. Uh, while, to be honest, only in very uh, few cases, we see customers using an eSIM directly inside the module. But if we refer specifically to an eSIM inside the module, there are also few Telit models that have that option. Not all of them in this case, but selected models. As well as there are few Telit models where we support uh, iSIM capabilities. Um, the, for example, the Telit SIMWISE uh, I've uh, I've shown before uh, in uh, during the presentation. So um, to recap, all modules can work with external SIMs of any form factor and technology, multi-MC, eSIM, 
And then on some selected models, we offer onboard eSIM, and on other selected models, we support uh, uh, iSIM. And, and I really encourage wh wh whoever is, uh, is interested to, in getting more details about uh, specific TELIT uh, uh, modules and combination with, uh, with the different SIM technology to, to, to reach out to, to us, and, and we'll be happy to, to have a, a deeper conversation. Great, thanks, Marco. Um, next question we got here. Can you tell us the main advantage, advantage sorry, of Telet's solution presented today against other IoT MVNOs or MNOs? Um, yeah, I'll take that. Um, um, first, uh, MNOs don't rush to implement the UICC platform, for example. Uh, it's not in their best interest. Uh, they are less agile and basically aren't focused on IoT connectivity. N not all of them, of course, but basically most of them. Uh, MVNOs miss the edge we have by managing the whole chain of value as a top leading module vendor uh, that we talked about. And uh, we progressed a lot in the embedded SIM solution, for example, such as iSIM or miniature SIM. So we can really support almost all parts in the chain of value for uh, for that manner. Uh, to make clear, we don't deal with uh, the device itself, but uh, are involved in the design process and, Im and implementation uh, of the model uh, into device. So those are the two advantages as I see it. Thanks. And Noam, this next question is probably for you as well. Um, what are the disadvantages of EUICC? Yeah. So, first of all, cost. Um, the basic SIM is more expensive, as well as uh, the platform that handles it. Uh, there, will, there will be integration uh, needed, and again, it will have uh, additional fee. Uh, there's a minimum fee per profile switch, so customers need to take that in, 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 in account. Um, the, offer thing, the other thing is uh, complexity. Uh, obviously, this is more complex without getting into specifics, but action and work needed to be done from both, uh, both sides, not something that will cause uh, us uh, or our customer to back down or something like that, but need to be taken uh, in consideration. Maybe some less technical customers will prefer not to get into it, but uh, nevertheless, it's available for them. Um, and integration to each MNO for sure, uh, uh, agreements if needed, integration between networks, uh, this place for both sides if a customer wants to bring his uh, own connectivity. Uh, so that's pretty much it. If, uh, right. if I can uh, add something uh, about, about the cost, uh, I, I think I've touched upon it also in uh, during the presentation, but just to... Um, to, to re-emphasize it, uh, I, I agree with Noam. So there are costs associated with um, uh, the UICC solution. I think uh, it's uh, it's part of the the natural evolution uh, of of new technologies that uh, these costs that today are still probably one of the main barrier of adoptions for for UICC will uh, will partially go away uh, in in the next years uh, while the the solution will be uh, more adopted in the market uh, volumes uh, uh, will scale up so i definitely agree cost is today a barrier for uicc um, but i also think uh, it's um, it's going to 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 be better in, in the next years um, with the with, with the grow of the, the UICC ecosystem. I totally agree with you. Great, thanks. Um, and Marco, I'll go ahead and send this next question over to you. Um, does eSIM work also for cellular IoT technologies like LTEM and NB-IoT? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. Uh, um, so uh, let me start by saying that uh, the, the eSIM um, specification is applicable to all cellular 
technologies, so so to 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 all all cellular generation and standards, uh, including uh, uh, LTM and uh, and narrowband IoT. Uh, now, um, I think it's it's fair also to mention, on the other hand, that LTM and narrowband IoT, that are the the, the cellular LPWA technologies, are not um, the best uh, technologies when it um, it comes down to eSIM profile download, and and this is mainly due to to battery consumption. Um, so clearly, when uh, you are using LTM and urban IoT uh, because your device is running on a battery, you want to preserve your battery as much as possible, and so probably you want to avoid uh, an eSIM profile download over the air, um, which would uh, uh, drain the battery and, and so reduce the lifetime of, of the device in the field. It's basically the same uh, with uh, with firmware over the air upgrades. So, so also FOTA is supported with LTM and Urban IoT, uh, but um, most of the time you, you want to avoid it not to consume the, the battery. Um, so another another maybe a detail is uh, um, eSIM profile download can be done over LTM uh, with no issues except for the for the battery uh, consumption that we we just mentioned. If we think about narrowband IoT and especially non-IP narrowband IoT. Uh, then maybe more difficult uh, to to do a, any SIM profile download. And um, let me also mention that uh, narrowband IoT has also some um, some roaming restrictions still. So there, there's uh, there's not seamless roaming for narrowband IoT yet. And uh, and in general, I see it more uh, a best fit a better fit for local deployments. So maybe the EUICC localization use case that Noam uh, presented, um, it's, uh, it, it's not uh, uh, the, 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 the right match for, for narrowband IoT. Uh, sorry, I, I took a, a, a little time to, to answer the question, but uh, wanted to give some, some more color. So uh, technically, it's, uh, it's possible to, to use eSIM with LTM and narrowband IoT. There are some details you you should be aware uh, when you you actually start engineering uh, the solution. Yeah, thanks. And and as you mentioned too, um, you know, if anyone needs some some more specifics on on these uh, these questions, feel free to reach out. You know, we'll get you in, in contact with someone. Um, I know that we are coming up on time here a bit, but we've got a lot more questions that have come in. So I want to get to just a couple more of these before we wrap up. Um, so the next question I have here is, can you please explain the difference between the GSMA EUICC consumer and M2M specifications? Uh, no, no, um, let me let me take it. Uh, talking too much, but uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'll, You're doing it so um, good, so. Uh, <laughs> Feel free. So, so I'll try to be short without going too much into the the technical details. Um, yes. So there are two GSMA uh, EUICC specifications. One uh, is for the the consumer world, and um, it's called SGP point zero two, and it's for those devices. Uh, uh, that are um, sorry. Uh, the the consumer one is SGP point twenty two two two. Uh, that is for the consumer devices where there is an end user triggering the profile download from his device. And usually the mechanism can be uh, that the profile is pulled from um, uh, from the platform to the device with uh, a, a QR code scan. Uh, that's the, the typical mechanism used uh, also on, on smartphones. Uh, the other specification, the one for uh, the M2M uh, use cases called SGP.02, uh, is instead using a push mechanism. So uh, 
we are talking here about IoT devices not operated by humans. So the profile download must be pushed from the platform to the device uh, and triggered from the platform because clearly there's no anybody that can uh, request the download from, from the device itself. All right, um, I believe that's all the time we have for today. Um, I know that we did not get to all the questions um, that were submitted, so we will be sure to um, follow up with you in the coming days. Um, please be sure to check your inboxes um, for the replay link. Um, I wanna thank again, uh, Marco and Noam for the, the great information today and, and thank you to all who joined us.